Kristen, hello. Thank you for coming to my session. I am Amber Villarreal and I am the seventh grade math teacher at Alamo Middle School. Um, and my presentation is on um, Microsoft Teams and Microsoft OneNote. So, Unleash the dynamic duo of unleashing creativity with Microsoft Teams and OneNote. So a little bit about who I am. I am Amber Villarreal. I'm from Edinburgh, uh, born and raised in Edinburgh. I went to school in ECISD from first grade all the way to where I graduated from Edinburgh North in 2011. Um, I ended up leaving the Valley and moving to San Marcos, where I went to Texas State University. Um, and I graduated in three and a half years. Uh, with my uh, bachelor's in um, education. I am certified to teach EC through six ESL generalist. And then in 2015, I also got certified as a four to eight generalist. Um, I started my teaching career um, in 2015. I graduated in December of 2014. And before I even walked the stage, I was already, I already had my own classroom at one of the middle schools about 40 minutes down the road um, in Luling, Texas. I was the only sixth grade math teacher in the entire district. It's a really small district of just um, one elementary, one middle school and one high school. And um, they took a chance on some young college kid and gave me my first teaching job and I took over in the middle and we saw 56% growth that year um, for our star. Um, once I was done with it, oops, let me turn this off. I think I have, should be hopefully muted everything else. Um, then in 2016 or in 2015, I decided it was time to come home. I had been away from the Valley for four years and I was so in love with my boyfriend at the time that I just couldn't be away anymore. We had done long distance, so I came home and I applied everywhere. Um, and I just so happened to walk into an elementary um, that was Ellen and William Arnold Elementary. I met Miss Rafaela Romero and she was amazing. And she gave me my first position with PSJA. Um, then, so I did third grade there from 2015, the 2015, 2016 school year until um, the 20, until 2020, until COVID. It, during the 2019, 2020 school year, um, uh, during the 2019, 2020 school year, um, I was beyond frustrated with the fact that I was continuing to get students in my third grade class that could not read. Um, so I went to go speak to my principal and I said, please send me somewhere that I can be used more effectively. I was tired of our kids not being able to perform and us getting all the pressure. Y'all know what that's like. Um, and I was like, put me where I can be six, where we can make sure that by the time our kids are tested, they are successful. So I went ahead and I, I moved to first grade and I loved it. Um, and I did meet my own goal of helping kids learn how to read, but I only did that for one year. So that next year uh, was the 2021-2022 school year. That's when we created the virtual learning program. PSJA was going to roll it out as the first ever, the only one. And um, me, along with so many other teachers in our district, went ahead and took on that initiative. And um, I was thrown a loop that after preparing to teach fifth grade virtual that they needed a seventh grade math teacher. So I said, OK, let's do this. And I was certified and I went ahead and um, two years ago, I was the only seventh grade math teacher for our district for the virtual learning program. Last year, when it was time to return back to in person, I was like, send me to the middle school. I was like, middle school is where it's at. And I was also lucky to get placed with um, Alamo Middle School. And I absolutely loved it. Um, I think there's so much to Alamo that it's just so amazing. Um, we have a lot of growth and a lot of good things coming. And I'm just so excited to see all of those things come into fruition. Um, we have really good kids there and and I can't wait to showcase them more this year. So that's just a little bit about me. 
Uh, next slide. Oh, I just, there it is. So I kind of wanted to share a little bit about before we get started. Um, you can put it in the chat or you can unmute. I want to know what are three things that you already know about Teams or OneNote? Um, what are some things that you already know? And, and I'm really connecting this presentation to three of our sustainability goals, one of them being quality education, which is goal four, uh, goal eight, which is, uh, I don't, goal eight, I'm getting there, is decent work and economic growth, and then goal 12, which is responsible consumption and production. So again, if you can put in the chat really quickly, just some things that you already know about Teams or OneNote, or how are you using it? You can unmute anybody. I'm not too familiar with the OneNote, but I do know about the Teams where you get to uh, really maneuver the, your calendar and create sessions and lessons and, and uh, meetings. Uh, it's very user friendly. Yeah, Teams is, I, I, I think so. Um, a lot there are a lot of features that can we can be using with our students in teams um mostly i guess in the middle school and high school level and then maybe even um your fifth graders to those upper elementary students now if there i would also kind of really like some guidance on what specifically you want as an educator um from this presentation i believe teams is a great co-teacher and a great team oh for sure um so yeah i mean teams is the number one communication tool that everybody is already using in our district like we should all be using it it's being purchased there are other apps out there that i know that some campuses use that is great if you want but at the end of the day this is something that we've had so we should all be familiar with it a little bit what are some questions that you have about teams or OneNote in your classroom Ooh. Cool. Really not interested. It's a great tool to use online classes. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Um, so I'll show you guys during this presentation how I specifically use it in my room um, with my students and how I found success with it and how I essentially covered all my 504, RTI, IEP, all of that information and, and I get those accommodations out to the student. And at the end, I want, I would love to see um, feedback on how, what's one thing or one tool that you'll take from this presentation that you can actually use in your classroom. So again, this is um, connected to sustainable, sustainable development goal number four, help education, uh, help educate the children in your community, right? We've got a great community, especially the kids in Alamo, but all over PSJ. So what are Teams and what it, what is Teams and what is OneNote? So just straight from Microsoft Education, Education Microsoft for Education, it says class teams have unique permissions and features for teachers and students. As owners of the team, teachers assign work, share class content, start meetings, and control who can post in the team. Each class team is also linked to its own OneNote class notebook. So that's your communication tool, really and truly. Microsoft Teams is your filing cabinet, is how I like to think about it. And OneNote will be your folders inside the filing cabinet, all your files. And I'll show you how that connects in just a second. Um, OneNote, again, straight from Microsoft. With Microsoft OneNote, educators can create notebooks that help them stay organized, deliver curriculum, and collaborate with students and colleagues. <laughs> Did it disappear? It disappeared. No. Of course. I have it open over here, so let me just switch screens. Leave this one and share this one instead. I apologize. Thank you. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so that is, yeah, that's that's OneNote. OneNote is a notebook that you can essentially have online for all of your things. So why Microsoft Teams? This is for me specifically. Like, why am I using Microsoft Teams? It's for familiarity, convenience, and exposure. So um, familiarity, Microsoft Teams is a PSJ's preferred method of communication. Like I said, everybody's using Microsoft Teams in our district. We all have access to it. We all have um, our classroom. Uh, what are, what's it called? Teams that is created within um, the C the right. Our 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 system makes it for us the same way it makes the Google Classroom and the same way they make the Teams. Right. If you go to your Teams, you'll be able to see one for each of your classes. Um, you'll see your campus one. You'll see if you're a CIT, you might be in one of those. If you're in any other. Um, type of committees or or anything like that throughout the district, you would be in a team for that. Um, and you have access to those things. So it's just something that we are all familiar with. It's built into the students devices. It's built into all of our devices or pre installed. Um, and that's where that convenience factor comes in. It's a mobile app. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on your iPad. You can get it downloaded to your computer. You can use it via the Internet. There's no excuse as to why. Um, there isn't that communication tool because everybody has it. It's across all platforms, Windows, um, Apple, everybody has it. Um, also exposure. So this is where I kind of like connecting in that sustainability goal. Um, LinkedIn did a had a post and they said that 91% of Fortune 100 companies are using Microsoft Teams to stay in touch with their business and their clients. And I mean, our whole PSJA um, motto logo uh, brand is on college ready, college connected and college complete. And so once we do that, if we are using these tools that the district is providing for us, there's no reason why our kids shouldn't be ready for the the real world or the business world or whatever their future would be because they would already have this exposure to this program that the majority of the US and, and Fortune 100 companies are using. So it's just giving them that familiarity. Um, they like at a younger age, again, from elementary, middle school to high school. And if it's something that they're using consistently by the time they graduate and leave our district, they should be proficient in at least the basics of these skills. Go to the next one. And why OneNote? OneNote, again, for me, it's about accessibility, sustainability, and being familiar. Um, OneNote is, again, accessible on every device. It is accessible on your Windows products. It's accessible on your Apple products. When the pandemic happened in 2020, um, my husband had actually just started his master's program in educational technology. Uh, mega nerd. I love him so, so much, and I know all of the things that I know because of him. Uh, or most of them, not all of them, most of them. I like to do my own digging too. Um, but he's really my guide in, in, in using certain things. And um, he had just purchased a Surface, so I needed a Surface too, a Microsoft Surface. And that has become my number one teaching tool. I use a Surface, and I like that all the Microsoft products are, are already integrated in, obviously. Um, and that's what the district uses. So for me, it's just one, um, ecosystem essentially that I'm using the same thing everywhere. There's some people that like the Apple ecosystem and they have their Apple product, their their MacBook, their Mac, their iPad, everything like that. Um, for this, for, for teaching, this is what I like. Um, sustainability, and that's where I connect to that sustainable, sustainable development goal. Um, responsible consumption and production. So OneNote is a digital tech tool, and it's not only environmentally friendly, but it's also, also economically friendly in the way that you're not needing to go purchase anything else. Um, we have this software that the district already has for us. We have the entire Microsoft 365 suite, I believe it's called, or family. Um, and so we have access to literally everything. So if we have access to it, why not use it? I know a lot of teachers love GoodNotes, and I have seen 
how amazing good notes is too but what i like is the integration between OneNote and and teams since all of our stuff is already connected um and the third reason why i really like it is because it's familiar so the teacher that is hesitant with technology um still would be familiar very familiar with with OneNote because it has all the same um, tabs and the formatting is the same as Word as you've been using forever, PowerPoint as you've been like all of the, the tools itself and, and using the product are exactly the same that you are already familiar with. So how is this used specifically in my classroom? So I've kind of used it in a couple of different ways. What I found that has worked best for me is my students, I require every student have a physical notebook and I too have a physical notebook, but it's more of a do as I say, not as I do. Um, it has worked for me. So that's why I'm sharing it. My kids have their notebook and I put everything on my I have my surface and I use OneNote for everything. So the way I do it is anything that I write, you write. I will be to doing all my notes on here so that you, the student, will have access to my notes on Teams. So I, the way it works is that uh, Teams can create a class notebook for you and every student will kind of walk through it together. Every student gets access to everything that I put into that notebook. So what I like to do is I do all my notes in class, then there should be no excuse as to, oh, well, I was absent. I didn't get the notes. OK, check teams. Um, oh, I, I didn't get to finish the notes during class. OK, check teams. Um, 504 accommodations, uh, IEP, RTI, anything like that. Every student, and I do this for every student, um, has access to all of my teacher notes on Teams. So somebody needs a copy, say that's one of the accommodations. I remember that being one of them for or for some students whenever I was in the elementary that we needed to provide the notes to the student. OK, at that time I wasn't able to, but now I found this tool that allows me to do so. So everything that I have, the kids have. So those accommodations are being met. There's no reason for it not to. Um, not only that, but like my biggest thing, like as a teacher is um, making sure that I'm helping to grow our future leaders. These are our future. The kids are our future. And I just want to make sure that I am helping, even if it's just a little bit and making them more responsible uh, and more accountable for themselves and everything that they do. Um, so being a middle school teacher and having athletes um, and having students that participate in UIL, whether it be fine arts or academics, um, the big thing is no pass, no play. Um, and always, well, it's I didn't get to I, I didn't get to do this or I didn't get to do that. OK, well, I have no problem allowing my students to use their notes on their test, but the only way they can use their notes is if it's in their notebook. So say they weren't do, they weren't following along. And that's fine. I'm not going to um, I the way I have my classroom management. My students are on task and if they're not, well, they still have expectations at the end of the day. They're still going to be required to test. They're still going to be required to turn in assignments. Um, and because I give everything to them and I make that clear to the parents at the beginning of the year as well, they have access. So it's always if you didn't finish, go take your notebook home copy them at home you have access to it on teams and then when they come back if they have all their notes in their notebook then obviously they can use it um and that has been really good because some parents have also asked well i don't really remember that kind of stuff from back in the day like i only remember how to add and subtract okay that's fine i will i include the videos sometimes or i include all the videos in our google classroom like if i'm posting videos but then i have again all the notes in my sloppy handwriting, all the drawings, me doing my best, um, our vocabulary, everything like that. And again, it's to make my life easier. I get to keep all of my documents on the one spot 
and the kids have access as well. Really and truly, I just wanted to give you more of a rundown of how I use it and then answer questions um, from you about what you specifically would like to see so that I can show you mine. Let me see if I can join again. Do I have any questions right now? At this device. There are no questions in the chat yet. Okay, cool. I'm gonna stop sharing on this one and jump back over. Hello. Okay. Okie dokie. So, well, I guess I can open this one first. So first, you would go to your actual Teams. Okay, so if you go over here on Teams, got it, I'll watch that video later. Right, if you come over here to your Teams and you click on the Teams tab, you should see the different teams that you are a part of. Um, campus Technology Support, Team Campus, um, and then each one that was created by the district for my classes. I will show you one that I already have. I don't know if this is the one that's made. Nope, not that one, this one. Okay, um, so in the team, you have a homepage, right? And it tells you all about Teams itself, right? Like you can post your assignments, you can, it has your calendar, it has any files that you shared, you can do stuff like this. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This is not something that I have played with. I am I have focused in my classroom on the notebook aspect of it just so that I can perfect that and make sure that my knowledge there is is strong so that my kids have access because at the end of the day it's what the kids need and I don't want to spend time on things that they don't. <laughs> but so this is what the class notebook looks like. Give it a minute. And if you come and you click, and I'll show you the different ways that you can get to it. So this is one of the ways via Teams, right? It starts out with a welcome page. Every single one does, right? And it gives you essentially everything that you need to know about it. So that's the good thing too. Um, anytime I, I don't delete these pages so that I can go back and use them for reference myself. Um, so they have the one note, like an intro about what it is specifically, like what is this one note notebook, the class notebook. Um, the cool thing about it is that there's a place that we can, we as teachers can have all of our teacher notes. There's a place that we can share our teacher notes to the kids. And then there's a place where all the kids can co collaborate together. So there's the student notebook, the content library and the collaboration space. Um, in the collaboration space, uh, anything that goes here, the students are going to be able to see it. Let me color here. I believe. Oh, here it is. Okay, so they can read anything that I put here, anything like that. Then in the content library, finish. This is where I start to post my notes. Now I'm going to over here so that you can see a bigger version, move over to my actual OneNote app. Oh. I'm in a different class, but it's okay. So the way that I do it is I set up a tab for all of my entry tickets. All of the entry tickets, I'm a math teacher, so all the entry tickets that my, uh, that my department, that they create for us and stuff like that, I have them on the Google Forms and I download them and I have their entry ticket of the day here. I've kind of done it different ways. Sometimes I've, or this year, or I think I started the year with making a tab of per day and then like doing, I had one of just entry tickets and then I slowly started doing, okay, let me just add everything for this unit and stuff like that. So for example, um, I would have that there, just different entry tickets. The students, I mean, how you run your entry tickets, everybody is different. Uh, the students are expected to complete it in the first three minutes as they come in, uh, first two to three minutes as they come in. And then after that, I go over it with them and we check their 
their work. Um, let me come over. That was a test review. Let's find something else. Okay, so the district gives us, let me see if I can find a better one that they actually. I, so the district gives us all of our vocabulary and whatnot. Sometimes I can be a little bit extra and I make my own slides as well that cover the essential question for the day. That cover the essential question of the day. Uh, my students are expected to, in their notebook, write the objective. So they will always be writing their content objective and their language objective in their notebook. How do we create classes? Okay, I'll go back to that one. Um, that's just so the students always write their content objective, always write their language objective in their notebook, and then they write the three essential questions so that they know they're guiding their own learning. Um, how do I create the class? Your class is actually over here. Nope, not over here. Over here. Oh, here. If you go to Teams, like you can go to your Teams right now if you'd like, you should have more than likely, well, these are all my old ones. So like this is my old class and stuff like that. Like you will have them there at one point so that you should be able to just connect. Like I have this one right here. So my enrich it I had a class that was labeled an enrichment class, but again, this was this past year was my first time in the middle school, like completely, completely. So I don't know, but I had like two things. Anyways, it was weird. This one isn't visible to the students, so I can kind of show you from the start of how we do it. Um, I would set up the notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and just start showing you. I would set up the class notebook. Set up a OneNote class notebook. And then you have two options. You can create a blank notebook or an existing notebook. Now, I use existing notebooks. Um, and by that, I mean I connect one that I had already started. So this year I will start with a blank notebook. So I'll go ahead and just show you a little bit about what it is. Um, but since I was doing it, it was like a transition and I was still trying to learn how I how I wanted to use it. But this year I will be starting with a blank one. Uh, again, it tells you that the, the collaboration space, teachers can edit, students can edit. Um, the content library, that's where you publish your materials. The teacher only section, if you have your data or something that you do not want the students to see, you can put it there. You don't have to. Um, and then the student notebooks, they have their own space that they can write their own notes and do stuff in there too. You would click next. You would label it. So maybe the way that I will label it this year is again per unit. So unit one. Unit two. Um, I can do entry tickets. And I can do uh, quiz corrections. Right, and this is just an example. Create. Getting my notebook ready. And I'm going to show you in just a sec how it'll also pop up on the in the OneNote app. Is there any questions so far or is there anything that have you had you seen these these features and had you tried playing with any of them before? Anybody? There aren't yeah. any questions yet, uh, but I have seen those features and uh, I guess I really have to look into it because whenever I try to click on the on like a class, it doesn't give me that same layout like it gave you right now. It did it? Mm -mm. On Teams? On Teams, uh-huh. Good. So that might just be a <laughs> update would, issue or something like that. How would I have gotten it then? Manage Teams, that's a good question. Uh, oh, these are Teams that, how did I get in these? Then I don't, guys, okay. I'm telling you, I, I'm not even gonna lie. Sometimes I just start clicking around and I just find and then it's like surprise. Um, yeah, 
Yay, I'm glad someone's excited. Um, Miss Tenorio, yours is just the one. No, I don't know. Was I invited? I don't think that I was invited to any. Hmm. Well, that's a good, I, I don't know how I would have gotten all these, then, <laughs> to be honest. Hmm. But I own them. Let me continue. Let's see if it'll if it'll share it now, though, if it reloaded. Uh, no, it might just be that we're starting a school, a new school year and, and maybe since updating. I have mine already. We were using it. Yeah. Okay, so it should in the content library. When you create your first blank notebook, this is it gives you literally, literally everything that you would need. Maybe we just not update because we came back and use the. Yeah, very true, very true. Um, it gives you it tells you everything and that's just a lot of what I do. I do a lot of YouTubing and a lot of nagging my husband or reaching out to our tech department. Uh, I reached out to I was I, I ran into Marco yesterday Torres and I was even asking him about other ways that I can use it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of wanted to just show you that it is another tool. OK, here it is. Hold on, hold on. This one. So I am back in my OneNote app, right? So if I come over here, I can choose the, the notebook to open. And like these are all notebooks that I've had previously and that I've been using. Miss um, Amber, can I stop you there? Yes. If we were to just go to the OneNote, it does not have it. I have to do this part first. Well, you can go straight to OneNote and you can create the notebook already. Okay. And then when you are in Teams, you connect it to an existing notebook. So that's, there's so many, it, there's just different ways to do it, right? All roads lead to Rome. So like whichever way, whichever route you want to take. So you could start up your, your notebook here and then you just open it in Teams. But the key, the biggest key to making sure that this works with the kids is that you show them how to use Teams. Because as long as they have access to Teams, which they all do because it's automatically on their computer, right? And they have their class and they can get into their class over here, right? Then you can, I mean, the kids, I'm not going to lie to you, the kids themselves don't use the OneNote tool because my expectation is that they're using their notebook. I teach math, so that's a non-negotiable, you're writing. Now, maybe an RLA teacher um, where they do have to do those short constructed responses or they do have to do the essay and and stuff like that. Maybe you as an RLA teacher, as a science teacher, as a social studies teacher, want them using the actual OneNote instead for the note taking and stuff like that. Um, I can show you, let me see if I have, no, let's go to this group. If I go to the class notebook, on Teams, right? It's just a matter of showing them where everything is. I can click any one of my students and they should have, they will have access to all of this stuff. So depending on if I pushed it out and whatnot. Now, did she add anything else to hers? I. Don't know, right? But if she clicks on unit three circles, then she'll have whatever I posted there. So when she goes home tonight or whenever she goes home, uh, she didn't finish writing her notes. She has access to all of them. And she literally has all of my notes. So what should your note, what should your classroom notebook look like? Your classroom notebook should essentially mimic my OneNote notebook. There should be no excuse, right? Um, and if you don't get it done, take it home and do it. That's how I, that's the expectations. I take the Nearpods that the district creates for um, our curriculum and I download them as PDFs and I insert them. And if I need to write on them, I write on top of them, depending on whatever it is. So I'm gonna jump back into OneNote so that you guys can see it. I come to 
Let's go to this one. And now I'll go to um, just any class. This was a quiz corrections and we go over the entire thing. Right. And the cool one of the cool things is like now I can use my rainbow colors. Now I can use my highlighters. Now I don't have to worry about does my pen have ink? Does it not? I have everything. Um, and because I am doing it digitally, the students get to write in my notebook and they're so excited when their work is in the whole class notebook. So it's just another really neat way of doing your teaching, I guess. It's just another way to have everything combined into one area. My biggest um, love is just that, you know, I had, it takes care of all the sped stuff. I like to, like all the things that we are required legally to make sure that we're following through, like I'm doing it now. Like there's no reason why I'm not, um, I'm giving, the, the kids have, all the kids will have access to it now. So I'm not singling out anybody. I'm going above and beyond for all of my students and that's how I'm dif differentiating. Um, I had, it ended up that I had a, a student fail and when the parents came in to talk to me, they were like, well, I didn't know. And I'm like, it's, it's, I was sending reminds. I was sending dojos. I was sending emails. I was letting them know, hey, your child is missing whatever. This is how, once I taught the parent how to access my teams from like their students account so that the student could see the stuff, they started doing better because they knew that there, it was their child's responsibility. And at the end of the day, we just need to make sure that we're making students accountable for their own learning. And that's what's going to bring our um, success rate up all together. Um, really, really, that's the majority of my presentation. Um, again, I use, let me go back to the video. I'm a very eco-friendly pupilist and looks great. Thank you. And I and I get real like self-conscious anyways because I don't like my handwriting. I feel like all the other teachers have the better handwriting and this and there's so much and they have all the cutesy stuff and da 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 da. And I don't know that this is very I don't consider any of this cutesy at all or anything, but it's it's just another easy, quick way for me to do it. Um I hear so many good things. I don't know why it's not loading. Of course it doesn't want to. I don't know. Um, I, I've heard so many good things about good notes. I know so many people love it and use it. And on that, okay, I guess this is a good information to know too. I use, like I said, I use my Surface. All of this though is accessible on your iPad. The reason why I use my Surface is because I already used it before I had my iPad. That's the only reason. Um, so I'm more familiar, like, I like the sizing better. I like that I don't have the huge bulky case. That's the only reason why I'm using my Surface rather than using um, my iPad, because all of these things can be done. When there was a moment um, this year that my Surface wasn't connecting and I was like freaking out, I pulled up, I pulled out the iPad and I just continued on the iPad and it wasn't a big deal. Um, all the features are, are pretty much the same and they're coming out with newer features too. Um, but it's just a really neat tool. And then the cool thing is like, I'm not lugging around or saving notebooks for forever. I do have them saved forever on the file and that's it. Yes, I know that's the best part. <laughs> And then it's like we we uh, we can like kill all these birds with all these stones of like how it's reaching these sustainability goals and and, and whatnot. So it's just I don't know. It's something that I really like. Um, I like to learn other things. I, I I like to use what we have. And since we have this, and I don't have to, I I don't remember if the district did or didn't purchase good notes for some, but um, I didn't feel like buying it. What at the time? So I was like, I'm not going to. I already have access to this. I'm just going to keep running and it connects with teams. So I used to before take screenshots of the notebook and upload it to Google Classroom. I don't have to do that anymore. I just saved myself a step completely because now I just integrate it with the teams 
and they know how to do Teams, they know how to do Google Classroom. If I need to post a, uh, something else, they can get it there. There are other features that I haven't played with. There's Forms, which is exactly the same thing as uh, Google Forms, right? Or there's quizzes, I don't even know what it's called, but they have their own quiz system. They have their own everything that you can integrate it all together, give the tests, the quizzes, the assignments, do grades all in Teams, which is cool, but I haven't learned it yet. Maybe that's for next year or in two years, so we'll see. But if y'all have any questions, feel free to ask, or if not, or if you want to tell, share how you've used any of these tools, go for it, Mr. Rodriguez. I do have a question. Can you go over how to create, since right now the Teams isn't really uh, showing us how yeah. just to go into the one, uh, the what is it called, the, the OneNote and yeah. create a, a notebook from there? Yes, I can. Thank you. If it, okay, it's going to make me sign in all over again. I already know, but. No, it didn't think of. Okay. Oh. Let me stop sharing on this side and I'll switch to the other computer. It'll be easier. Okay, so let's go here, right? If I open my Microsoft 365, right? As soon as I open or whether you're on, let's go from my PSJ. Okay, so you're here in the My PSJA. If you go to this little waffle at the top corner, right, you have OneNote right here. I just use OneNote. You can do class notebook, it's the same thing. I literally just click OneNote. Okay, when you click OneNote, you'll have the options to all of your previous notebooks, or you can create a new notebook. If you are going to create a new notebook, you just click this one right here, you name it, and I am going to name it. I am going to name it. We create. Okay. So now my notebook is empty. If I wanted. I need to now oh. I'm going to come down here where it says add section and then this would be my first divider. So let me um, say introduction. OK, and so I create my tab and then I have my new page and whatever it is, I can title this one all about me. I would give it a title. Now you want to add rule lines, uh, the ruler lines, anything like that. Uh, you would click view. And you click rule lines and then you can put them how big you want. OK, if you want, you can do grid lines it's for math teachers, right? Um, if you want thinner lines, you can choose how you want to do it. Do you want to change your page color? You can, right? There's so many different options. I'm going to probably have a panic attack if it's anything other than white. So I'm going to put it back. <laughs> um, one of the other really neat things is, like I said, there are different tools. There's the math assistant um, that I can, oh, I haven't played with it yet, but I know that I can use, hold on, let me go home. Um, there is been, okay, right. I can I can add I can insert different things. I can insert a picture. I can insert text, whatever. So one of the assignments I was actually already I know what a nerd. 
um, talking to my husband about how he's using it in his class this year and how I plan on using it in my class and something that he's already doing with his students is they create an all about me page and it's really to get the kids familiar with how to use um, the OneNote itself. Now for me, because I'm not necessarily going to have my kids doing their notes on the notebook, that's just the way that they get to it. Um, I don't teach them this aspect, but you can add stickers, you can add um, pictures, you can add anything and you just type. I have on, because I have my pen, it's down there, right? I can write, I do all my notes, I can insert, um, let me see if I have anything. I don't even remember what I put. You can insert your PDFs and then give it a second. And there it is. If you have an assignment or an infographic, anything that you want to share with the students, it will be there. Now I can show you if I switch back because I like to use this one. Um, Let me see, is it? Here we are. There we go. Here in Teams, if I go back, did I, I did create it, set up a notebook. Are there any templates that are already created and ready for us to use? Yeah, the class notebook one. So when you do it through class notebook, um, this is where everything automatically goes for you. And it's already there. Or what, what do you mean? Nowadays we have a lot. I just leave the same. What, 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 um, Miss Denorio, what subject do you teach? I think I'm going to be teaching economics this year. So it's the first year that I think um, seniors, they should be ready to use like technology and run with it. So yeah. I wanted to do, like open responses to where I could see lifetime if they're working, because especially with scholarship essays and stuff like that, like you want to know that they're able to put some thoughts into, you know, words. So I wanted, you know, that's a kind of a turn off that I had, like everything has to be created, but I guess because I'm not seeing those options, I don't see the journal. So I just yeah. going to really try to update it. Yeah, I think that so that is the one thing that I, I don't know, like as I can't even tell you how or why I have these teams or how I got them. And I there's no way that I'm the only person that has them. I think it has to be like an update issue or something like that, because if I am, that's weird. But um yeah, so they would get, you would just, even if you came into the content library, you just add pages, you add pages for them. And the good thing uh, is that you can see the kids notebook from home. So you don't have to uh, be lugging their notebooks home or you can be logged in. Like literally there are times where obviously we have our different class periods. I don't, I have my, I, I'm using my surface and then I also have my laptop open and I can't remember what was it that I wrote on my first periods notes. And so on my computer, I'll open up my other notebook and it's still in real time. So if I add one and the other, it'll pop up. It takes a little bit to connect to like between the two or to sync, but they will sync up. So you should be able to see in real time what your students are, are typing and writing. Uh, there was another question or hand raised or something. No, yes. I'm so sorry. It's just me. I didn't want. Oh, I'm so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll go after you, Belinda. No, I thought it was me writing the comments. I don't have a question. Oh. Using this, uh, I, I like the notes because I never really even played with that. But I'm very familiar with Google Classroom, and that's where I put like everything yeah. from notes to tests to quiz to everything. Can I use this and integrate it into Google Classroom? So I think that this is its own kind of learning management system on its own. Now, I know what you're saying as far as like upload. So you upload your notes essentially. Yes, I everything goes in. You take like so just like you said, if you miss a day. Everything's there by day. Exactly. Yeah. And so, but you you take the time to upload it. Now, I think what I would, I 
what I would do is maybe because I don't know that those two can connect as seamlessly since they are two different like companies essentially. But yeah. the but this team but teams can like teams can put your there. I now I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know how to do these aspects of it. But there are the note part. The note part will be there for them so that you don't have to take your time to upload every single one. It's automatic for you. Um, nice. And giving them, it would just be mostly teaching the students how to get into Teams. Because once they get in, they know how. Like once you show them, they're good. Because that's what it was. And then afterwards, like throughout when I was just teaching them, it would be those like first two or three tests that I'd be like, okay, or that first one, nobody was allowed to, they were only allowed to use paper notes. And then I'm like, okay, well, if you remember, you had, and I set a timer, you have 10 minutes to log into Teams and use my notes. Where everybody's like, duh, 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 duh. oh, how funny, we do know now, right? And so little things like that, and it would, it speeds up the efficiency, um, it lets them, it, 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 it's just keeping them accountable. And really and truly, no matter what grade level we teach, we want, we want that for them because then it makes our jobs easier. So to answer the question, no, I don't think that it, it the two connect. But if you do at least your notes, this would save you so much time as far as like doing the upload to each classroom and stuff. Yeah, I like that. That's good stuff. Thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else? Anything? There are no more questions. Uh, we're about four, let's see, about nine minutes away from the end. Uh, just Mr. Torres did put in the session uh, oh, three yeah. survey. Yeah, if y'all can do that survey there, that's how you're getting your door prizes. Um, I'm still, like I said, like I'm still playing with it, trying to see how it's going to work best for me. Um, uh, this this past school year, the first semester, I was only there until the end of October because then I had a baby and I was gone. So when I returned, all my notes up until October, until I left, were completely digital everything 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 when i returned and my students had been without a teacher for two months and they had only had a sub i needed to revamp and change my game plan so i did second semester go back to a hard notebook but because i had to reestablish, you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome um i, I just needed to reestablish essentially my management and my um, authority in my classroom since there was a sub there before and so i went back to paper notebook you're welcome. But the plan is to do this one again and, and fingers crossed, keep running with it throughout the entire year. Thank you guys.